Well, I guess it is uh, it is time for the world famous NXT report. I hope you're all ready. It was a show. That's what it was. Although I had a great main event, I will say that. So, Toxic Attraction came out to open the show. And I'm waiting for, you know, a new challenger or whatever. But then I re- I remember that they're doing that that uh, Iron Survivor Challenge. And so uh, we're not going to have a challenger until that's over. So Mandy's got nothing to do. She just has to be champion. But out comes Katana Chance and Caden Carter. And uh, they, they uh, banter back and forth with Toxic Attraction. We have a brawl. Uh, the babyface are beat down. And uh, we'll be getting a apparently a championship match here where they'll be defending against Toxic Attraction. So, you know, that's something we haven't seen. Cora Jade cut a promo on Wendy Chu, which led to a match. It was Cora Jade versus Wendy Chu, and it was all right. I wouldn't say it was a bad match or anything like that. But, uh, you know, Wendy Chu's a good worker, but her gimmick sucks. And she still has to do the thing where she pretends to sleep to fall for the elbow and miss it. looks so dumb. And uh, finally, uh, she brings a drink to the ring. Because her gimmick is that she is, like, uh, just getting out of bed, so she's got to have her latte or whatever to wake up. So Cora Jade grabs her drink, spits it into her face, or throws it into her face. DDTs her and pins her. And then the key is that, uh, I I guess they've been doing this storyline where you'll find this hard to believe. But Wendy Chu had a tough time in school. You know, because she walked around in her pajamas and an iPad and uh, slurped on her drink and wore those sleeping earmuffs and everything like that. You know, people made fun of her for that. She's sensitive. And so uh, now this is affecting her mentally again. She's being reminded of these hard days in high school. And so when this mean girl beats her, she cried. She broke down and cried and weeped. And her fake lashes are hanging on her face, and she's just crying. She's so sad. I was like, hmm. Huh. Apollo Crews is going to be challenging Braun Breaker at deadline. He's writing about it in his journal at a diner, but he didn't see the future this time. We had Kiana James interview. She admits, I ain't, I ain't going to get this bar. So she is a horrible business person in storyline. She can't get Chase U. She can't get this bar. I'm like, okay. And then we have a Duke Hudson segment backstage, and Pretty Deadly shows up, and they get into a big brawl, and that leads to a match later on in the show. Ivy Nile beat Kiana James. I actually thought the match was all right. And uh, Kiana James, uh, Fallon Henley comes down. Argument with Kiana James, interference. Niall puts on her finish and uh, submits her. And then uh, Kiana James and Fallon Henley fight. They're still really mad at each other, even though Kiana's given up on buying the bar. It's still a sore spot between these two ladies. And then Diamond Mine comes down, and they uh, they cut a promo. And the story seems to be that uh, Julius and Brutus really want to fight Induce Cher. But every time they're getting all cocky and burying him and everything, you know, uh, Ivy Nile's, like, trying to tell him to calm down. Like, let's not get so excited. Let's not be nutty here. So she sees that they're, they may have bit off more than they can chew with these two. So we had the debut of Scripps. It's Reginald in a mask. And he comes out. He does all of his same Cirque du Soleil spots. People are chanting for Reggie. But he's scripts. He's not Reggie. And so he wins. He leaves a a calling card on Guru Raj's chest. I don't know what you're going to call him about. (laughs) Like, if if you want someone to perform at a kid's birthday or something and do some flips... But he left his card on him. Maybe it's got a poem on it. It can't be if you want someone to write poetry for you. I mean, <laughs> do not call that number. <laughs> Don't. But that was uh, whatever. You know what, though? This I saw the picture. Death. No, see, I don't agree quite 
yet because I saw the picture and I'm thinking, all I thought was like, I'm looking and I'm thinking the rapper MF Doom, but it's not. It's like MF Dumb. Like this, this mask is ridiculous. You've been waiting all day for that one? No, but it like, let's see. <laughs> I'll take Reggie should never have been seen on TV before he was under a mask doing something like as Reggie the butler that sucked. I mean, because, yeah, he did a bunch of stuff and flipped up into the air. But like, how did that really in, you know, help Carmelo or Nia Jax? What did he ever really do with it? So he should have always probably been a blitzkrieg type of character somebody like that who could just do crazy moves and i think in this character that may be something that will get over in nxt i mean i think the outfit is ridiculous and i don't know how much more poetry i ever want to hear from him but as far as a new start i think this is the best thing you could do well i mean we've already got uh we've already got what's his face the guy axiom's hurt axiom yeah but it's I like think do we need an axiom and a schism are they going to well, be a here's, team? Yeah, but here's the thing. Axiom can actually, and again, no offense to Reggie, far more experienced as far as being a wrestler. He's a much better professional wrestler. So if it's him carrying a bulk of the match and Reggie doing the flips and the twists and doing a little bit more of that. Well, we're getting yeah, ahead of ourselves here. I don't know if they're teaming, dude. I was just bringing I know, up. But we I'm don't just saying, need two you, you, randos you, and masks. Yeah, but you brought him up. And then what would you bring up the uh, schism for? What did I bring up the schism for? Yeah. Did I bring up the schism? Yes. Oh, well, they were next. Aye. They had a Thanksgiving message. It was stupid. They said Thanksgiving is coming up. We're going to uh, we're going to have our own holiday, Day of Schism Invictus. We'd like someone to come celebrate, and the fans chanting sacrifice. They want to see this guy killed, so the heels kill him, and the fans cheer. To be fair, did you see the guy? Oh, God, they're supposed to be heels, dude. We're not supposed to cheer this fan getting killed by these heels. But that's all they wanted, and they delivered it. And so well, now they're like baby, baby face faces. then. Isn't that what you said about MJF? Tur Joe Gacy will be the biggest baby face in the company. No, he won't, because no one cares about him as a baby face. They just cheered something he did. There's a big difference. Trick Williams doing an interview, and uh, old Trick gets tricked into not coming out during the main event. But the end of the day, he just did anyway. Glad I sat through that. Braun Breaker likes to fish. <laughs> what? That's that was the vignette. You're right. He, I like, he I likes like going to be fishing. outside. He likes the solitude. He's a yeah. uh, fisherman at heart. Yeah, it's, it's stressful being the champ, so he likes to fish. He's Think a, he's, he's a, a catch and release a, guy or a fisher? Hmm. Yeah, can't say fisherman anymore. He's a fisher. A fi why don't why can't you so say he's fisher? also a giant crack apparently. That what? And we had uh, Zoe Stark and Sol Ruka, and bro, I was not, I was not super enamored with her, uh, with her heel promo last week. And as far as matches, she works way better matches as a babyface. I mean, uh, granted, she was in it with Sol Ruka, but it was just like there. There was nothing special about it. There was nothing where like, oh my god, look at Zoe Stark the heel. She just played the heel role, and then she won. Then Nikita Lyons ran out, and Zoe Stark bailed. I was like, man, well, she wanted to do it, so you're bad now. Now, uh, I don't know what to tell you. This Von Wagner, I'm liking this guy. Yes. <laughs> He's out there, and Edris Anofe and Malik Blade want him to go partying with them. And he goes, man, I got my dancing shoes on. But then he buries them. And they're upset, and a huge brawl breaks out. And uh, I did like what they did. Last week, they did a big, long promo where... Uh, uh, Idris. Actually, I think, it's, I think it's Malik that wears a sweater vest. I'm pretty sure. Am I wrong? I think you're wrong. Let me find out about this. Am I, am I really wrong here? I just want to see how much dead silence Brian can pull off. As he looks to see who is who. Well, the picture on the... Uh... Okay, so so Malik is the one with the sweater vest. Okay. Well, they, he did the big uh, speech about his sweater vest. How have I confused them for like uh, two months now? No one's brought this to my attention yet? Malik wears the sweater. That's what I thought. Malik is the one with the sweater. 
Can you this tell guy's Jimmy, confused too. Can you tell Jimmy and Jay apart at this point, Brian? Brother. Andrus and Nofe, I have thought for about three months now, is the giant jacked up guy that never, ever wears a, sh- a shirt. I have so many jokes about you and right Malik now. And Malik Blade, Malik Blade wears the sweater vest. <laughs> You're telling me I'm wrong? I'm loving it. Everybody here, everybody on the chat is also confused. Is this the Berenstein Bears? DJ doesn't even know because he doesn't even watch NXT. Brian is correct. Semp is incorrect. I, I, don't drag me into this. Well, apparently you're wrong. This. No, I'm just, I, what, hey, I just. Malik Blade you. wears the sweater vest. Edris Anofe never wears a shirt. You're wrong. Anyway, they uh, they tore off the sweater that they spent all last week talking about how he wore as a tribute to, I believe, his late father. So, and man, when they tore that sweater off, these fans were furious. You could hear them in the building. That was some heat. I thought this was great. You know what else was great? Pretty deadly and chase you for the tag team titles. By the way, I'm still going to need an explanation on why they felt it was a good idea to ask Von Wagner and Robert Stone out to hang with them. Pretty Deadly needs to be on the main roster now. Yes. They are such a great working tag team. And uh, and Andre Chase and Duke Hudson, the story of the match is like, things kept going wrong, and it was always Duke's fault. But you don't know if it's his fault on purpose or not. It could just be an accident. And, of course, whatever happens, happens. Andre Chase gets beaten. You know, Duke's very sad about it, but you're, you're left wondering, like, uh, do we trust this guy or not? Wait, really? Yeah. That's for, no, th- no way. Did that you watch for, this show? Yes. That's why I can't believe you're saying this. It's not for the fans to wonder about. It's for Andre Chase to wonder about. But also us. It was very clearly placed in that when Pretty Deadly, I forget which one it was, they fell out of the ring and knocked uh, Hale over. Like, he went down to try to help. So if it's building towards anything, it's building towards Andre Chase always thinking that he's not there for him. I don't think this is, I think it's more for that than it is he's actually intentionally doing this because the way they laid it out was way too obvious. Oh, well, they, they, it's for us as well. Is this guy, is this guy... A baby face, or is he not? Is he in there to screw Chase you, or is it just happened to be a series of coincidences where he's never in the right place at the right time? So I, I don't know, but you know what I know? Pretty Deadly should be on the main roster. Yeah. They're an incredible, incredible tag team. And man, Booker T is enamored with these guys. <laughs> Airport test, great wrestlers, he says. Then the main event was Wesley beating Carmelo Hayes to retain the North American title. This match was awesome. Melo should be up too. Yeah, he should be. They had a great match, and uh, what's his face came down? Trick. Trick. But he actually didn't cost anybody the match. Uh, still got the win by Wesley. And then afterwards, poor Dijak debuted. Beat up Wesley. And I guess he might be next for the title, but... What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me? <laughs> you make me mad? I, I guess seeing, seeing you guys... When you needle me? Quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will for Brian, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> Rufus versus Roman Reigns. 2016. Rufus. Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back, drops reins on the top rope. Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb that they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, eh, forget yeah. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.